Our first guest tonight is one of the president's most important cabinet members, a rising star who's critical to driving the president's agenda, Mick Mulvaney, the White House budget director, now acting director of the CFPB. Uh, Mr. Director, good to have you with us. Lou, thanks as always for having me. You've got to be, I know, uh, at least in some, some part extraordinarily excited at the prospects uh, that looked so dim uh, in possibility just a week ago. Yeah, regarding the taxes, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty exciting here tonight. There were some critical votes in the Senate over the course of the last 24 hours. Yesterday right. there was a motion to proceed, which was critical, um, and we got every vote in the Republicans uh, on that in the Senate. Then today I believe there was a motion to recommit uh, this bill right. to, to committee, which also passed, or excuse me, which failed, which okay. was critical for us. So uh, things have gone extraordinarily well the last couple of days. And, uh, and now the issue is triggers and how much uh, you will be able to cut uh, in the way of rates. Uh, give us your understanding of where we are right now uh, in, uh, in raising those rates uh, by necessity. Yeah, I, I think one of the reasons you're seeing this go so well is that this is how the system is supposed to work. This is how legislation is supposed to get made. It, it looks a little ugly from the outside. Um, the traditional description is like watching sausage get made. But the fact of the matter is this is how it is supposed to work from the beginning. And what's so critical to us here at the White House is that our priorities are still preserved. Our priorities, uh, middle class uh, folks, ordinary Americans will pay less and they'll have a simpler tax for, uh, uh, system, a fairer tax system and that corporate tax will be dramatically lowered. Those two things um, were in the House bill, they were still in the Senate bill. Yeah, there's a lot of details that are still being worked out at this last, uh, at this last hour regarding things um, like triggers. But from an administration standpoint, our principles are still preserved, which is why we're so excited about the progress that's being made. Principles preserved, the rate uh, in terms of the corporate uh, tax rate uh, moving higher. The president has had to yield a bit in the, uh, in the horse trading uh, and bargaining. Uh, at 22 percent uh, right now, he had wanted 15. Uh, wh where is the president? Is he on board uh, with uh, th the direction right now in the Senate? Yeah, I think if you ask the president, he'd still like that original 15, which is where we started. But the right. fact of the matter is um, that we had agreed to, to, to accept 20 percent. That's what's in the House bill. If the Senate does happen to pass it at something else, 21 or 22, if they pass something different, then obviously those two factors will have to be reconciled uh, between the House and the Senate before final passage of the bill. But again, this is how the system works. I think if you end up in a situation where the House passes 20, the Senate passes 20, we know that number is going to be 20. If the House passes 20, which they have, and the Senate passes 21 or 22, the final number probably ends up someplace between there. But again, our principles have been preserved. The process is working, and it looks like, we, um, as the majority leader just said in your lead-in, that uh, we can see the finish line in the Senate tonight. Let me quote another leader here, if we could put up a quote from uh, uh, the, uh, the director of Office of Management and Budget some uh, <laughs> three years ago, talking about the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. If we could uh, show that, please. Uh, there it is. Uh, Mick Mulvaney, Congressman Mulvaney then, said it's a wonderful example of how a bureaucracy will function if it has no accountability to, <laughs> accountability to anybody. It turns up being a joke, and that's what the CFPB is, really is. It has been in a sick, sad kind of way. Uh, you, <laughs> you are now the acting director and have uh, has your outlook uh, or the agency itself improved. Um, no, uh, I, I, I want to make it clear. I think that many of the people who work there are very professional. The first week has gone extraordinarily smoothly. I've had great meetings over there every single day, um, and I'm really impressed with the folks. The structure of the CFPB is, is, is just fundamentally flawed. The authority that I have now as the acting director really should frighten people. You can sit down in a, in a, in a room with three or four people and say, well, let's, let's go off and do this. And there's no accountability to Congress. I can set the budget pretty much without any input from Congress. In fact, without any input from Congress, uh, we get an allotment from the Federal Reserve. So it's, it's uh, on one hand, people call it independent, but the real bottom line is it's simply unaccountable. And this is the way I explain it to folks. In fact, I've explained this to folks who work at the CFPB, that if they end up in the future uh, as being on the short end of of something that CFPB does, there's nobody they can complain to. They can't complain to the president. They can't complain to the, the senators. They can't complain to their members of the House. There is no accountability to the American taxpayers here, and that's wrong. I'm hopeful that
that it will change. Uh, until it does, we're going to try and limit as much as we can um, what the CFPB does to sort of interfere uh, with capitalism and with financial service markets. And uh, again, congratulations on uh, moving forward, the legal victory uh, this week uh, to assure uh, that the, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, departing uh, head of the agency, Richard Cordray, could not appoint his own successor. It seems ludicrous uh, from a distance, uh, but I know that it makes it, it's the stuff of high drama in Washington, D.C., that there should even be a question whether that is the authority of the president or perhaps a departing uh, director of an agency. Yeah, I, I, as again, as I explained to the folks at the CFPB, uh, this was always going to happen. If they thought, if anybody was over there working, if anybody who supports the CFPB, Elizabeth Warren, thought that this agency was going to be independent from this president forever, that was never going to happen. The president was going to get a chance to appoint a successor to Richard Cordray, be it now, as it's worked out, or in July when his term ran up in any event. So my, my fear is that a lot of folks, uh, including um, the, the woman who's now purporting to be the acting director, thought that they would be uh, sort of beholden to the Obama administration, but if somebody else won, they wouldn't have to be beholden to them. That's not right. Um, the, the president of the United States, this is an executive agency, has the right to have influence over here, has a right to see their agenda put forward, and that's exactly what we're going to do at the CFPB. The idea of an independent agency, no matter the agency, is a, should be frightening to every taxpayer, every citizen, because what it means is not accountable to the elected representatives of this country, from the president to the Congress to the Senate. And it's, no surprise, and it's no surprise, Lou, that here we are having the, the only real challenge to the peaceful succession of power as part of this transition with a new administration, which is what we still are, is coming from this agency, which is founded on not being accountable. So uh, I'm glad to see the court rule the way that it did this, this week. I've looked forward uh, to, to continue to do the work the president wants me to do. It's been a fun, a fun couple of days.